All right. We are continuing with encoders um, and decoders. So our previous um, video would have been on multiplexers, and we're going to delve into encoders and decoders. Now, encoders and decoders, multiplexers, flip-flops, they are all digital circuits. So what you will find is that some of the information may be applicable to multiplexers and would also be applicable to um, flip-flops. Now, the first thing we want to look on is what are decoders. Now, we looked at combinational circuits before when we were looking on AND gates, um, AND gates, NOT gates, OR gates, um, NAND gates, all of those, right? So a decoder is a combinational circuit that has N lines input. So we've been always looking at two to the power of, and we're using two because most of the circuits, well, digital circuits utilize binary. And we know that that would be, the two would signify the binary number system. So it has N number of um, lines and a maximum of two to the power of N outputs. So if it is that you have, all right, leave that. Once the outputs will, one of these outputs will be activated based on the combination of inputs present. So though you may have two, four, um, eight, 16, 32 output lines, right? It's only one that would be outputting at any given time. We would have discussed Boolean terms where it is that these are devices that can be in one of two states. So it means that it's not going to be outputting all of these at once. So you have two output lines, it's not that the two lines would be outputting at the same time. So you have um, one of these outputs will activate high based on the combination of inputs present when the decoder is enabled. So we know we have binary, which is high and low, a high is a one and a zero is a low. So what this means is that the decoder detects a particular code and the output of the decoder has nothing but minimum terms of n input variable lines when it is in. All right. So a decoder diagram. So we're looking on for K, what I have seen is where it is that you're being asked to draw diagrams which represent your decoder or your encoder. So typical rectangular box and you ensure that you label what type of um, decoder it is. So your decoder here, we label our lines. So here it is that we have one input line that would be I0 and we have a second input line which would be I1. So we start at zero and we're labeling it. So it would be N minus one inputs. So if it is that you have um, inputs, you will also need for a decoder and enabler. Now, it's very important to note that not in all cases that your It's not in all cases that your decoder is going to be set to one or utilized set to one when it is that we're looking on the truth table. And we'll discuss that more starting. So you will have your inputs, your input line. So we have two input lines starting label zero, one, and you have your E line, which is your enabler. So you will also now have four output lines and they're all labeled starting at zero. So we have O0, O1, O2, and it would be O3, right? So your enabler is going to help to switch between the input lines, which is also going to assist you with whatever output is needed.
Now your truth table for your decoder looks like this. Now, if you notice here, I do have where all the enablers are set to one. So what I was saying before is that it is not in all cases that your decoder enable input is set to one. A matter of fact, not all decoders have an enable input. It can actually do without. But for the purposes of your CAPE exam, you're going to draw your enable line. So what happens is that when the, the, when the enable is present, it allows input to be controlled, right? That, that is what it is in, in essence. So when the enable input is set to a high, the decoder is going to function as usual. And when the output lines are determined by the value, sorry, when the output lines are determined by the values. However, when the enable line is set to zero, which is a low, the decoder typically ignores the input signal. So all the other output lines is going to remain inactive. So basically you're not going to get an output once you're enabled your enabler is set to a low, which is zero, because it would be off. So if your enabler is, enabler is going to help you to switch between the inputs, then you can understand why it is when it is low, then you will not have an output. So when we were looking on combinational circuits, we did say that you look at the number of inputs, divide that up. So all my enabler, they are set to one, based on the description that I gave before. and then. I have I0, I1. So because it is that we have two inputs, that's what we're going to start with. Two high, two low, and then we split that, which is 1010. One, one, Very simple. Now, where the trick comes in is to determine how it is that you get a value for your output. Now, your decoder utilizes the AND gate, and it utilizes the NOT gate. Very two, very two important um, points there to remember. So your, your, your decoder, once it is that you're drawing the combinational circuit, it uses only AND gate, and it uses the NOT gate, all right? So how did we get the value? And I think like if you look on it, you'll see that, that like there's a pattern. O3 star the the first the first output, depending when it is that you have both on high, is going to be a one. For you, when both is on low, you get a high. And then for O1, it's only when input zero is on high that you get a high. And then for output, I think there's an error here. But let us see where the error is and we'll fix it as we go along. So let's look on the formula for that. So let's look on output zero. Now for output zero, the formula is going to be the enabler times the negate of both inputs. Let me see if I can type that. So we have O, I can write the subscript using this. So O0 is going to be, OO is going to be equal to E times, um, the negate of, let me use the bracket and the apostrophe to show the negate here. So it's going to be I0 times, no, I0, close bracket, apostrophe, which is to represent negate, times I1, close bracket, and apostrophe. Where is that? All right, good. 
So you take what the enabler, which is one, I zero, and remember that we are calculating for um output zero here. So based on the formula. And as I said before, this, it uses the AND and the NOT gate. So you would basically do the opposite. So E would be equal to 1. But in this case now, where we have both being 1, those would change to 0. 0 times 1 would give you back a 0. In this case, negate both of this. This would change to 0. This would change to 1. Let me use a spotlight. So, all right. So the enabler is 1. The input zero would be one and input one would be one. Now, if it is that we're going to negate, it means that we have the opposite. So this would change to zero, this would change to one. But in essence, once you have a zero, you're going to get back a zero because the AND gate is basically where you're multiplying. So it would be one times zero, which would be zero times one, which would give you back a zero. Same thing here, these two would switch. So this would be one, this would be zero. That would give you zero when you multiply it. Multiply that times one, give you back a zero. Both of these values, they change now. So we have one, one times one, and that would give us a one. So when we look on the output here, you'd get back a high when your enabler is high, but your, when both inputs are low. All right. So that was the formula now for, you know, output zero here. So the formula now that we would utilize, the formula that we would utilize now to calculate the output one would be to negate input one and input one only. So what does that look like? Change this. So it would be O1, which would be equal now to E times, and we said that we're only going to negate um, input one. So that would be I zero times open bracket um, I one close bracket negate oh that's one i one close bracket negate changing this to i all right so that's that part so we would only negate um I1. So what does that look like? Negating I1 means that all the values that are here would be the opposite. So this now would change to 0, this would change to 1, this would change to 0, and this would change to 1. So if it is that we're multiplying everything here, which is these three, it's going to be 1 times 1 times 0, and that will give us back a 0. 1 times 1 times 1 gives us a 1. 0 times 0 gives us 0 times 0 gives us a 0. And 1 times 0, 1 times 0 is 0 times 1, which will give us a 0. So that now would be your output for output 1. So you only get a high when it is that all your inputs are on when your both your inputs are on high and when your enabler is on high as well so let me clear that all right so pretty much you can see what the formula is going to be for the other one so in this case now we negated both inputs. With this one, we negated just input one. And for O2, what we're going to do is to negate input zero. So O2 would now be equal to E times 
I zero negate times I one. That's the formula. So that's it now. So let's look on that. So we're going to negate um, input zero. So we're going to have the opposite. So that now would be zero, zero, one, one. All right. So if that's the case, let's work this out now. So it's going to be and gate again. So it would be one times zero times one, which is going to give you back a zero. One times zero, which is zero times zero, gives you back a zero. And this one now is going to be one times one times one. So this is where the error is, guys, as I would have stated before. Let me see if I can change it in a PowerPoint from no. All right, good. So we would have made the correction there. So here we have um, 1 times 1 times 1 giving us 1. And here we have 1 times 0, 0 times 1, which would give us back a 0. So in this case, again, right, we have all inputs on high and your enabler on high. So for O3, if you look on the formula, then you'd be able to identify what the formula is going to be. So O3 now would be equal to E times and get um, input zero times input one. No negate there. So we're taking it as is. Let me clear this part. All right. So we're taking them as is. So one times one times one gives us a one. One times one, one. One times zero is going to give you zero. And as I said, once there's a zero in any of the inputs, then it's going to return a zero. And that's the case. So for output three, um, the enablers input and the enabler being on high. For output two, um, well, we can look at it like that right now because we would have negated some things. So basically, all your inputs need to be on high for your output to give you back a high. And that would have been the formula there. But if in exam, you don't want to do the whole calculation unless they're asking you for a formula, then I think you can see like a pattern. So it's actually, no, don't bother with the pattern. Never mind. All right, so let's move on. So that's our truth table. Now let's look on our combinational circuit. So as I said, your decoder uses the AND gate and it uses the NOT gate. Of course, you have a simpler way of doing all of this, but um, where it is that you would write your A1 and your A0 each time, if it is that you're easily confused by the line. But let's trace it. So here we have I0 and we have I1. And if you notice, the lines are going straight here. And based on our formula, oh, I had remained the formula. Based on our formula, where we have our enabler and our inputs all on high, well, we didn't negate any of those. And those were going through one AND gate. That was for um, output three. Now, here in this case, we're seeing for 
All right, let's move to the second one. So here it is now. We have A0, A1, right? And then for A, we have the negate now for A0. So A0 negate and A1 as is going through the AND gate right here. So if you notice for the logic gate, we're not using the enabler. We'll ignore that part and you're just going to use your inputs. Um, so we have, as I said, A1 and we have the negate of A0 and that will give you the output of output 2. For um, output 1, we have A0 as is but then we have the negate of A1 going through to give you the output for output 1. And for output 0, we negated both A0, input 0, and input 1 to get that part there. Okay. And here we have our enabler going through each. You, as I said, not all decoders utilize the enabler. So you can actually draw it without it, but for the K, for K purposes, include it in your drawing. So you just have one line right to the bottom here, which is going in to give your enabler. All right. So what are some of the uses of decoders? So we have memory systems that are utilized. So we have our random access memory and our read-only memory that utilize decoders. And it basically helps with selecting memory locations as stated here, your control units. And as I said before, this will sound very much similar to what we would have looked at for multiplexers. So your control units use it for signals, right? And we know that the control unit basically sends through instructions to the other parts of the computer and to get things done. And here it is that again, it is being used by the ALU to assist in specific mathematical operations. And for multiplexers, we said such as addition, subtraction, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication. I, If my memory serves me right, I know that your ALU does not do one of those operations. I don't remember what it is. Right, no, but it's either division or multiplication that it doesn't do one of, one of those. All right, so it's also used for demultiplexing where it is that decoders are used to demultiplex multiple data streams um, being transmitted over a single channel. And if you watch back the video for multiplexers, then you'll get a better understanding of the multiplexing using for multiple streams types of decoders so we have two types here we have binary decoders which will have just two signal two outputs two signals high and low and you have decimal decoders which would basically have 10 which is 0 to 9 which would represent the decimal number system so another part of it is put off there let me see if i can try and fix it can see the last part. But all it is speaking about is the format, which would be binary coded decimal. All right, good. Further notes is in your Google Classroom. All right, so that's decoders. Let us now look on encoders. Encoders is the opposite of your decoder. So we looked at a decoder which had four inputs, two output line. It's going to be the complete opposite of that for your decoders. So what you have now is less input for your encoders and more outputs. 
So a, an encoder is a digital circuit that performs the opposite function of decoders. While decoders take a binary input and select one of many outputs, encoders take multiple inputs and generate a single binary output. So you'll have multiple output lines, just the same, but it's just one that will be selected. And the output highly depends on um, it depends on the inputs. So your encoder, your decoder uses the AND gate and your encoder uses the OR gate, which is addition. So this now is an example of a four by two decoder. So it means now that we will have four, four input lines and two output lines as depicted here. So for the truth table now, as I said, we simply have a formula which we will utilize for this. Again, your Your encoder uses the your encoder uses the OR gate, and as I said before, your decoder uses the AND gate. So this is simply addition that we will utilize. So here now we have two outputs. So we have A zero or output zero. Output zero is going to be equal to y1 plus y3. Let's see that again. Hold on, let me write it down. All right, so output, well, that is supposed to be 0 and 1. So output 0 would be equal to input i1 plus i3. So input one and input three, right? And then output one, output one is now going to be equal. Where is it? Sorry. All right. So old, output one is now going to be equal to I through two plus i3. So we don't have any negating that we are doing in this one any at all. So we have output 0 being input 1 plus input 3 and then output 1 is going to be input 2 plus input 3. I don't know if it is because I have a mistake right here. For some reason, I am unable to require this now. Let's try again. All right, so this, all right, what am I saying? All right, so this should be output zero and output one. Good? Good. So those are our formula, which is going to basically determine our outputs. Um, your output is going to look similar to your decoder, right? We're just one. Let's go down vertically. First one, if you start with one, that is your first input. Your first input is high. 
for I1, your second input is high. For I2, your third input is high. And for I3, your fourth input is high. So let's go now. For output 0, it is I1 plus I3. So that's I1 and I3 right here. Let me use the spotlight. So I1, which is 0, I3, 0 gives back 0. 1 and 1 gives back a 1. 0 and 0, so 0 and 1. So in this case, once any of your input is a high, it's going to give you back a high. Notice that we have not utilized input 0 here. And for output 1, we have input 2 and input 3. So we have 0 and 0 gives us 0. I made a mistake again. So I need to fix that. Right. So for... 2 and 3, so that would be 0. That This is supposed to be 0. I'm going to fix that shortly. And then these two would be a 1. Let me fix that now. And so that is rectified. All right. So can you remember your encoder uses the R8? All right, moving on. So this now is your... A logic gate. And because we didn't use I0, that is why, let me go back, because we didn't use I0, that is why your true, your combinational circuit is not showing it as an input any at all. So what we are using is I1, I2, and I3, which is going to give your two um, outputs. So based on what we had before, we had where it is that input, output zero is equal to y3, y3 plus y1 in this case. So y3, see here, y3 coming to this one and y1, which is going to give you output 0, and then we have 3 and 2, which is going to give you output 1. And that would be your logic gate. All right, uses. Again, you realize that we would have been talking about these before um, in multiplexers and also in decoders. So encoders are used in data transmission in the communication system. Encoders are used to encode data before transmission to enable reliable communication. Um, all right. Memory addressing in memory system. Encoders are used to convert memory addresses from decimal format to binary format. And we know that our computer understands binary. And uh, it is used in the control unit to decode the states of various inputs in a binary representation for processing. So think about it along the line of calculations. And that is it on encoders and decoders.